Mr. Ambassador, a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. I believe this is your first time at the INSS, but certainly not the last. Thank you. Uh, you recently took your post as ambassador at a time when there are serious concerns in Israel about the role of the U.S. in the Middle East, the extent to which the U.S. is willing to address the many strategic challenges in the region. We heard as much from uh, the Prime Minister. Can you reassure us that the U.S. will keep a significant presence here? As you know, there is not such a thing as a vacuum in geopolitics. Well, first of all, I'm honored to be here. and uh, This is a honor not only for myself, but for the United States to be asked to come and as ambassador, I'm honored to be here. And I want to tell you, I'm uh, honored to be uh, in the presence of the Prime Minister. As, as you know, the administration has, uh, feels quite strongly about the, the Prime Minister uh, and this coalition. Uh, he, uh, as Common said, uh, it's a beautiful thing what you all have created here. And with the uh, Prime Minister and the, and the Foreign Minister coming together, this is what democracy is all about. And uh, this administration, the Biden administration, uh, from the White House to the State Department is uh, not only honored to work with this coalition, but feels uh, that the country is in the, in the right hands at a very critical time. Listen, when I got here, uh, when, I t when I testified on my confirmation, uh, I made it very clear. My, I have one objective, and I think I speak for the President, is to enhance this democratic Jewish state. And what I mean by that, I don't really share an ideology. All I have is a, a North Star, and that is the North Star. And so when I think about the North Star, it's like, okay, what, do you, what, is your, what are your priorities? And the priorities are what the president has told me my priorities should be. And number one is, as, as the president has said, this is unbreakable ties between Israel and the United States. And my job is to reinforce that. What does that mean? From practical, I see uh, our, our national security advisor, the, uh, Israel's national security advisor, he knows quite quickly that what that means. It means the unbinding commitment to uh, the defense of the state of Israel. That is the Iron Dome. That is the MOU. It is all the aspects that we, as the United States, can provide the state of Israel. Number two is our view is that we need to keep the vision of a two-state solution alive. It's very important. There are no illusions that I'm going to be at the, uh, at the Rose Garden uh, doing a, a, a signing, but, but that doesn't mean we cannot keep a vision alive. We are also helping to support the Palestinian people by dramatically increasing assistance, working with them. And third, as the Prime Minister just said, this is about an economic miracle that goes on here. If the economy is not strong in Israel, you cannot have a strong defense. And my job is to not only continue to enhance that by supporting things such as the Abraham Accords and the Visa Waiver Program and the practical stuff about working on this issue around the startup nation and helping uh, drive economic support. So I, uh, the, our idea of the United States' is commitment to this country is not only ironclad, but we understand it. it's who we are as a people. The United States and Israel are one when it comes to defense, when it comes to economics, and, and focus, because we're going back to your question. The focus of this president, this is probably, in my view, the not only the most committed president to the Middle East, but the most knowledgeable. Here's to the guy who has not only been the vice president for eight years, was a chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, was a chairman of the Judiciary Committee, every single issue around Israel and the United States and its security, he has been in the middle of it. So to say it's the focus, the focus is laser focus on the security of the state <laughs> of Israel. Well, that's uh, great to hear, and, and, and we certainly uh, are very pleased to hear that. But nevertheless, uh, um, there are concerns here about the sharp divisions within the Democratic Party and the extent to which that may affect the commitment to Israeli security and also uh, the polarization in U.S. politics. Does it affect the, uh, the bipartisan support that we used to have in Congress? Uh, let me be clear. Very, very clear about this. The vast, vast, vast majority of the Democrats and Republicans support the ironclad commitment to this country, okay? That's the MOU, that's the Iron Dome, it's the support of this country. Sure, are there a few voices who uh, share or uh, express objections? Sure, and they should have every right to do that. However, if they cross the line, 
any voice across the line and steps into an idea anti-Semitic or, or anti-Israel in a way that's just not a productive way, then we need to be clear. But voices need to be able to express themselves, and that's, a, that's what makes Israel what Israel is. That's what makes the United States what the United States is. But it's clear to me the commitment is, is solid. And, I, and, I, and I've said this, I think I said this to you in my office when you came to see me, we can't also stick our head in the sand to say that there, isn't a ch that there aren't younger generations that don't have the same commitment that some of us do to the to security. They don't, the history of the place, it's like I had the opportunity to speak at the Holocaust Remembrance. We got to keep remembering who we, this country is and keep reminding people so we don't forget that. And I think we have that commitment. So I'm, I'm very confident it's a, the bipartisan support of Israel is rock solid. Uh, we just heard the Prime Minister uh, talking uh, extensively about Iran mm. and the fact that Israel has to invest a great deal in order to face the challenge uh, from that part of the world. Um, the negotiations in Vienna uh, sort of continue. I mean, the, there is a break now. International attention is focused on the Ukraine. The U.S. seems to have its plate full, both with what's happening in the Ukraine and Russia and with China. And all of this is they're not very good news for us, for Israel. What can we expect uh, uh, in that respect? Um, are we here, as the prime minister seems to imply, on our own? Or can we also trust that the United States will be part of the effort to contain Iran? Yeah, I, let me be, again, uh, as clear as I can be. The president has made it abundantly clear. The United States will not allow Iran to have a nuclear weapon. As uh, Mr. Khalada knows, he speaks to the White House every day. We have conversations multiple times a day. We are in the midst of talking to our negotiators every day. This administration can walk and chew gum at the same time. Yes, we're focused on Russia uh, and Ukraine, and we're also focusing on making sure the Iranians do not get a nuclear weapon. And we are here as partners to Israel. One of the things we wanted to make it clear at the onset of the Biden administration, there'll be no light between what's going on in Vienna as it relates to what, making sure we're communicating directly with the Israelis. So we're all clear. We want a diplomatic solution to this. There's no question. And I know that the prime minister and the foreign minister and the national security of Israel understands we'd like to find a diplomatic solution to this. I think it's in the Israel's best interest. It's in the world's best interest. But make no mistake, we will not stand by to let... Iran create and have a nuclear weapon. Thank you. Um, let's go to the Palestinian issue. Uh, it's always there bubbling, as you know. The two sides, uh, the Palestinian as, and us, the Israelis, we seem to be unable to engage in a meaningful political process by ourselves. Uh, the last half-baked uh, initiative which was Trump's uh, deal of the century. It's not clear to which century he was referring to. But nevertheless, not surprisingly, nothing came out of it. Do you think that the Biden administration may at some point try to take a more proactive role or you know, perhaps uh, prompted by a crisis that is never far away? And moreover, could the Abraham Accords switch from being, having been conceived as a bypass to the Palestinian issue to perhaps serving as a platform to help make progress in that? Regard. Well, that's a big question. Um, let me just take it in, in a couple pieces. Uh, number one, um, the administration, the Biden administration, is fully and completely committed to a two-state solution. We believe that a two-state solution is the long-term interest of the state of Israel. There are my people who differ with that. That is the position of the United States, and there's a position of many, many Israelis as well, number one. Number two, we believe the, it is imperative that we take care of the Palestinian people. Take care of the Palestinian people. This administration, after the previous administration, <coughs> has not only um, increased from zero, by the way, of the previous, we have now up to $450 million of a direct assistance to the Palestinian people, including money to re, uh, other organizations that support the Palestinian people. We believe that they deserve the dignity and security as Israelis do. That is our fundamental belief, that they deserve that. And we also agree, as you share, it's the long-term interest of Israel 
to treat the Palestinian people with the, that respect and dignity and hopes that we can create the momentum, the momentum of uh, a vision and a two-state solution. It is not simple. I, I, again, we, we as the administration spend an enormous time making sure that neither sides do stupid things to screw that up. And I, that's not maybe a diplomatic term, but it's a reality. And by the way, it's not just the Israelis, it's not just the Palestinians, it's everyone in the, in the region to try to create the environment so we can have potentially lasting peace. So, you know, you talk about the Abraham Accords. I am an enormous fan of the Abraham Accords. Listen, I, again, I'm now nonpartisan, but in my previous life, I may have been a little bit more partisan. Um, uh, this administration is fully supportive of what the Trump administration did on the Abram Accords because, again, going back to my North Star of what's good for a democratic, strong democratic Jewish state, the Abram Accords is that. It helps. And I would hope, I would hope at some point that the Palestinians will not only embrace the Abram Accords, but the Abram Accords will embrace the Palestinians. Because at the end of the day, it's got to be tangible to the Palestinian people. They've got to feel it. Uh, if they feel it, they'll embrace it. Well, lastly, Mr. Ambassador, um, you have a lot of duties here as a U.S. ambassador in this part of the world. But have you set for yourself additional goals uh, beyond being ambassador, the formal part of it? I mean, do you have uh, expectations? Uh, we know that uh, you have been getting to know the, all the good restaurants in Israel. <laughs> <laughs> what about other things? Well, listen, I, this, what, when they asked me uh, if I would uh, agree to be the ambassador, I, I literally, um, how phenomenal is it, okay, to be able to come to a place that you care deeply about, emotionally about, that is so interesting, that every day that you're spending time thinking about how you can make this place a better place. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, listen, I'm a, I'm a Jewish kid from Duluth, Minnesota, okay? Uh, I'm not a religious Jew. I'm a... I'm a I am a, I'm a cultural Jew from Minnesota, and I come to this country to embrace everyone, from the ultra-Orthodox to the, to the secular and everything in between. And I care deeply about strengthening. So the things I want to do, I want people to say, listen, he wasn't ideological. He, wasn't, he wanted to spend time with the Palestinians. He wanted to spend time with the ultra-Orthodox. And he wanted to do the right thing. And if I can figure out ways to do that, and people say, ultimately, this is about Joe Biden. It's not about Tom Nides. It's about Joe Biden. This is how Joe Biden thinks about diplomacy. This is how he thinks about this country. This is how he thinks about the future of Israel. He says to him, says all the time that he considers himself a Zionist. Uh, I certainly consider myself a Zionist. I care deeply about the people, the security of the state of Israel. So I'm, um, I hope that I can make a modicum of change, but to reinforce that message. Well, thank you very much. Uh, as we say in Hebrew, amen to uh, <laughs> everything you said. And as I said at the beginning, this is your first visit. Please consider the INSS to be wide open for you at any time. We will try to bring you from time to time here uh, for you to share with, with us uh, your knowledge, your, your interests, and the policies of the U.S. I'm thank honored. you very much. I'm honored. Thank you very much. <laughs>